Jamnagar city and its surroundings is the last place one would expect to find birds, especially large numbers of migratory water birds. Gujarat is known to be the most industrialized state in India, and Jamnagar is where this manifests itself the most. Jamnagar is known as the world oil city because the world's biggest oil refinery, belonging to Reliance Industries, and a smaller one belonging to the French company SR Oil are located in Jamnagar. The Jamnagar refinery is a private sector crude oil refinery. It was commissioned on the 14th of July 1999 and later in 2008 it underwent a massive expansion that doubled its capacity to 1.2 million barrels per day. The expanded refinery covers an area equal to one-third the size of Manhattan. The refinery has an advanced design, so it can process a wide range of crude oils, including heavy, high-sulfur sour crude, which many refineries cannot handle. These refineries extend all the way to the coast, where there are jetties from which the oil is loaded onto ships and exported. It is not sold domestically in India. In addition to oil, Jamnagar is home to other industries. It has huge reserves of bauxite, contributing 96% of the total production of the state, and this is exported through Bedi Port, 7 kilometers north of the city. Salt is produced all along the south coast of the Gulf of Kutch, and many of the salt pans are situated where once there was mangrove forest. The Marine National Park starts from the coastline. It lies in the intertidal zone between the lowest and highest levels, the area that lies underwater at high tide and is exposed during low tide. Here in the Gulf of Kutch, this area can be a few kilometers wide and it creates huge mudflats, which are excellent feeding grounds for waders. Thousands of shorebirds spend the winter months in this area numbers that are astounding. The industrial landscape and polluted air do not seem to disturb them. The salt pans along the shore are a great refuge for birds at high tide and have replaced the natural sandbanks that were reclaimed inside dikes that border the industrial zone. The natural border between the sea and land used to be a large mangrove forest which has been drastically reduced. The patches of forest which still remain are good roosting and nesting sites, not only for herons and storks, but also for smaller birds like the oriental white-eye. The Gulf of Kutch is an arm of the Arabian Sea, separating the Saurastra Peninsula from the Great and Little Ran of Kutch. At its seaward end, it is 58 kilometers wide, from which point it tapers gradually eastwards, extending for nearly 170 kilometers, with a maximum depth of 60 meters and an average depth of about 20. Most of the beaches are sandy and muddy or have large sandstone expanses. The Marine Sanctuary and National Park are situated on the southern shore of the Gulf of Kutch. It is the first marine protected area in India and was established in 1980 to protect the special corals and marine life of the Gulf of Kutch, partly in line with the coast being developed as an industrial area. The sanctuary extended over an area of 270 square kilometers from Oka at its seaward beginning to Georgia at its eastern end. The core area of 110 square kilometers was subsequently notified as the Marine National Park. In 1982, this protected area was enlarged to over 400 square kilometers. There are between 30 and 40 islands on the Jalnaga coast in the Marine National Park, all surrounded by reefs. The best known islands are Pirutan, which can be accessed by boat, and Narara, which is now connected to the shore and can be easily reached by road.
The hotel president in the center of Jamnagar is usually the place where birders base themselves when exploring the area. Mustak, the hotel manager, is very familiar with the natural history of the area and is involved with its protection. He knows all the birding sites and will arrange vehicles, guides, takeaway lunches and permits. He also knows the tide schedule. If arriving on the beach at low tide, one can find oneself faced by miles of wet sand and no birds around. While at high tide, water reaches to the mangroves or to the dikes and birds are nowhere to be seen. It is important to reach the beach just before the tide starts rising. When the tide comes in, it brings the birds closer to land, making it easier for bird watchers to watch them from quite close. Shorebirds and waders can be found anywhere along the marine sanctuary, but access is very limited due to distance from the road, mangrove forests and industrial areas. Narara is one place where access is easy and birds are plentiful. It is located about 60 kilometers from Jamnagar, next to Vadinar village, which is surrounded by oil terminals and jetties. When one joins the solid road that heads to the Marine National Park, flocks of flamingos and waders can be seen in the salt pans. The road ends at a forest department check post where an entrance fee is paid. This is the only area with trees and shade, and it is wise to take a coffee break here before tackling the mudflats. From here it's a short walk through mangrove forest to the beach, where, if arriving at the right time, the mudflats will be packed with thousands of waders and other shorebirds. The intertidal zone, which is a few kilometers wide here, is enriched with numerous organisms such as starfish, sea cucumbers, corals and crabs. It is especially rich in insects, crustaceans and other small invertebrates which the birds feed on. Different lengths of bill enable different species to feed in the same habitat without direct competition for food. Many waders have sensitive nerve endings at the end of their bills, which enable them to detect prey items hidden in mud or soft soil. Another good site for shorebirds is near Sachana, on the road to Jodia. Here too there are salt pans on the way to the beach, but there is also an open area of grass and shrubs with many pools that attract terrestrial birds, as well as waders that do not depend on mudflats for their feeding. The mudflats here are also parts of the Marine National Park, and the birds are similar to the birds one can find in Narara. The crab plover is the bird that attracts most birders and photographers to Jamnagar. Nearly all the other waders are migrants from the north and can be seen in other parts of the world. The crab plover is endemic to the northern and eastern coastlines of the Arabian Sea and its tributaries, the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, and some islands in the Indian Ocean. Any sightings out of this range are considered as vagrants. Within its range, this species makes short migrations, and the Gulf of Kutch is the most easterly place where it winters in large numbers. Juvenile birds are the first to appear on the mudflats of Narara towards the end of August. By October, the numbers grow to hundreds, and by December, into the thousands. In March and April, they return to their breeding sites in Pakistan and Iran. Although related to the plovers, the crab plover is sufficiently distinctive to merit its own family, Dromadidae. It is the only member of the genus Dromas, and it is unique among waders in making use of ground warmth to aid in incubating its eggs. This bird resembles a plover, but has very long grey legs and a strong, heavy black bill similar to a tern. Its black and white plumage and long neck, upright posture and heavy bill make it distinctive and unmistakable. Its bill is unique among waders and specialised for eating crabs. The plumage is white except for black on its back and in the primary feathers of the wings. 
They are noisy birds calling frequently on their breeding sites as well as on their wintering grounds. Males and females are similar. Juveniles have the black areas on the mantle greyish and remain in this plumage for a year. This species usually feeds singly or in loose groups, flocks occasionally foraging together on mudflats or in shallow water, and gathering at communal high tide roosting sites. The species inhabits sandy coastlines and islands, intertidal mudflats, estuaries, lagoons and exposed coral reefs. Its diet consists predominantly of crabs as well as other crustaceans, small mollusks and marine worms. Kijadia Bird Sanctuary is located 12 kilometers from Jamnagar, on the way to Sachana. It was declared a sanctuary in 1982, and at a little over 6 square kilometers, it is the largest bird sanctuary in Gujarat. Before Indian independence, a check dam was built for storing the waters of the river Ruparel just before it entered the sea. Over the years, with fresh water from the rain and river on one side, and salt water from the sea on the other, a unique area was formed. Kijadia is a very important roosting site for the common cranes that winter in Jamnagar district. If one arrives at the sanctuary at dawn, one can see thousands of these birds as they're taking off and flying to their feeding grounds. It is also one of the only places in peninsular India where great crested grebes breed, and a very important breeding site for black necked stork. India's tallest stork species, which is declining all over India due to habitat loss. After taking the detour from the Jamnagar to Rajkot Road, the road continues for three kilometers until it reaches the office of the Forest Department. Here there is a small museum. This is where the permit is obtained and the fees are collected. A little further on, a large welcoming board announces that this is a bird sanctuary. Turning left will lead to the saline part of the sanctuary. Here there is a small village and locals use the water for their needs. Between the two parts of the sanctuary there is a very large area of salt pans, which at times can have more birds than the sanctuary itself. To reach the freshwater side, if coming from the Forest Department office, one will need to drive straight past the big welcoming board. The salt pans will be to the left, and after a few hundred metres there's a gate on the right. Driving further straight on is wise in the afternoon, as the sun is on the salt pan side. The freshwater lake will be on the right. On a morning visit, it's advisable to enter through the gate on the right and follow the road for a few kilometres until the road ends at a watchtower. At first, there is a dry area and very little to see. Later, the landscape transforms into a very large lake with some islands dotted in it. The level of the water depends on the rain, and in some years, when there is not enough rain, the lake is dry and Kijadia Bird Sanctuary is not really worth a visit. The watchtower at the end of the road offers great views over the lake, and it is an excellent picnic spot. In 2016, the Forest Department took on a large development project to create facilities for visitors. Rampant construction inside the sanctuary in the name of beautification and chopping of bushes and shrubs that were natural nesting sites has resulted in the sanctuary virtually turning into a picnic spot. Several buns separating bodies of fresh and salt water have been extended for a long distance, which has brought people to a disturbingly close distance from the heronry. Hundreds of cement benches have been constructed on the fringes of the wetland so that picnic goers can have a closer look at the birds. Bridges were constructed to connect pathways to the birds' roosting and nesting sites, and new access points have been built at places that were earlier banned for people as they disturbed the birds. The chief conservator of forests, however, asserted that the forest department was only following a proper management plan to improve the habitat, and only some portions of the sanctuary are used for recreational purposes, 
And in other countries, and even other places in India, access to the birds is built so that people can enjoy watching them with more comfort and gain awareness of nature conservation. However, numbers of birds have dropped significantly after the construction work of 2016, and hopefully the sanctuary will recover in future. Orca is a small port town situated at the seaward end of the Gulf of Kutch, about 150 kilometers from Jamnagar. Bet Dwarka is the easiest island to reach in the Gulf of Kutch. It is only about three kilometers from Oka port, and a ferry operates between the island and the port regularly. There is an important Krishna temple on Betdwarka, which makes it a popular place of pilgrimage, and therefore access is easy. It is a big island and is surrounded by several sandy beaches. The Charakala salt pans area on the road from Jamnagar to Oka, a little after Kabalia town, is another important area for birds. It is easy to reach as it's on the main highway and since it is not a protected area, there is no need for permits and there are no costs. It's a good area for flamingos, pelicans and waders. It's one of the only places in peninsula India where Caspian tern nests is also a good place for Saunders tern, but this species can only be safely identified in breeding plumage. In all other forms, it is identical to little tern, which is very common here. Indian skimmer can be found in the wetlands around Jamnagar in winter. They do not have a permanent site, so it's advised to contact Mustak in the President Hotel to know their whereabouts. These birds are usually associated with freshwater, but here they are found also on mudflats by the sea and in salt pans. The Indian skimmer is one of the three species that belong to the skimmer genus Rhynchops in the family Laridae. They are somewhat turn-like, but the skimmers have a short upper mandible and longer lower mandible that is ploughed along the surface of the water as the bird flies over the water to pick up aquatic prey. It is only found in southern Asia, where it is patchily distributed and declining in numbers. The birds are mainly found along rivers or estuaries. They are very brightly marked in black, white and orange, making them difficult to miss. Non-breeding adults are duller and browner than breeding birds. Juveniles are grey-brown above, with pale fringes to the feathers on the back and wings. The birds forage for food by flying low over the water with the bill open and the lower mandible skimming through the water. They forage in small flocks and often associate with terns. They feed mainly on fish but also take small crustaceans and insect larvae. They often feed at dusk and can be nocturnal. The breeding season is mainly March to May. They breed in colonies of up to 40 pairs, often with terns and other birds. They nest on exposed sandbanks and on islands in slow-flowing lowland rivers. Most of these rivers are now dammed and water is artificially distributed. This practice leads to water level changes in rivers and results in flooding of nesting sites, which is the main reason for the birds' decline. Other threats to sandbanks are conversion to agriculture, pollution and the increasing numbers of stray foraging dogs that destroy eggs and chicks. Populations of Indian skimmer appear to be declining at an alarming rate. The total population was estimated at fewer than 10,000 in 1994, but it is thought to be fewer than 5,000 at present. This is very sad because it is relatively easy to protect nesting sites by employing a watchman who will keep away the stray dogs and human disturbance and inform the barrage handler of water levels in the nesting areas. The shorebirds of Jamnaga are a jewel for bird photographers as they are easy to approach, especially when the tide is coming in and the birds walk towards the photographer. 
The people of Gujarat do not hunt birds and animals. But the birds' period of comfort here is very short. It is important for the photographers to keep an ethic of not disturbing the birds. When approaching birds, one should do so very slowly, a few meters at a time. Then stop and let the birds get used to one's presence before approaching any further. At any sign of nervousness, the photographer should stop and wait. Shorebirds usually walk away or fly a short distance and then stand a little further away. This shows the photographer exactly how far he can approach and once he has reached that distance, he should stop and not try to approach further. Photographers should bear in mind that they are not alone and every day different photographers are coming to these beaches and the birds are exposed to this behavior every day. Ethical photography is a key for modern bird conservation.